Hey everyone, today we will cover how to export our textures from Substance Painter and how to set them up properly with V-Ray and Maya. We will specifically cover how to use the relatively new Substance Painter workflow plugin to automatically link textures. This is part of the new Substance Painter ecosystem and plugins for Maya. The Substance in Maya plugin comes automatically installed after Maya 2018, but if you're looking for an installer, I'll link that below in the description. I've covered how to do this manually in previous videos, but in this video, I will also show you how to link height maps as displacements while also saving time by automating the texture setup. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Substance Painter. I have this shader ball all ready to go, uh, fully textured that I'll be using for this demonstration. Uh, it's just composed of some modified smart materials with some, some of my own custom texturing. All right, if you're interested in this shader ball, you can look up Grant Warwick. I'll link that down below in the comments uh, or in the description. So you can grab that and use that for your own look, Dev. All right, so the first thing I always do is make sure I go and create some ray trace renders using iRay. So I go ahead and hit this camera icon over here, which does rendering iRay, and I create a couple of decently high res uh, images. So I have a fully ray traced image because that's what you want to compare uh, between the two render engines. You want to compare iRay directly with V-Ray. All right. So once you have some renders, you can basically let that run and you can save off a couple of renders using the, the render settings. But once we're done with that, you go ahead and now export your textures. So I'll go to File, Export Textures. So the export textures window pops up and you can see that we have all of our texture sets here, some global settings um, and everything. And you also have output templates. Now we are specifically going to be using V-Ray Next metallic roughness workflow, but keep in mind that if you're using V-Ray 5, this workflow will work um, with this as well, but this will not work with anything previous to uh, V-Ray Next. So if you're using V-Ray 3.6 or older, um, you're going to have to watch one of my older videos uh, where I show you how to do that uh, using the manual process. All right, so uh, everything's going to stay here. It only exports what you have enabled in your texture set settings. And this is uh, this is all we need here. All right, so I will go back to settings. I will make sure that the output template here is set to V-Ray Next. Typically, it's set to PBR Metallic Roughness, but I'll go ahead and just set this to V-Ray Next Metallic Roughness. I'll leave it as PNG. I'll leave it as 8 bits and and typically you can leave the size as the texture set size, but I go for about 4K or 4096 when I'm doing um, still renders. And I leave dilation set to infinite, all right? Now I go ahead and also use the output directory as my Maya folder. So you can see that I have my Maya folder here set up and I'm just gonna export this right into source images. So I select folder and I'm all set. And so once all of that is set up, I make sure I have the right template file type resolution, um, channels, and padding, I go ahead and simply export. And this is about 35 maps at 4K, so I'm gonna pause and let this export. All right, great, it's done. So it went ahead and exported out all the maps um, that we need, and I can actually pull this up and find my source images folder, and you can see that everything is has exported properly. And you can see that it hasn't exported anything that we don't need, so there's no uh, anisotropic or there's no transmissive, even though it'll say here, if it's not there, it won't export anything. Great. So I'll go ahead and close this and we're going to be all set here with Substance Painter. So I'm going to go and jump into Maya. So for this comparison, I have a render scene all ready to go that we can start uh, setting up our materials and textures. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have the Substance plugin loaded. So the way to do that is just go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager. And then you're gonna scroll down. You can see that I'm already scrolled down here, but you'll typically start at the top. Go all the way down until you find the substance set of plugins here. And you can see right there. And I typically just load all of these and we specifically want the substance workflow, but, uh, or we'll be using that, but we definitely want all of these. So enable all of those, close. Then you're gonna see this here, this shelf here that says substance. So you're gonna select a substance shelf 
And these are all the new tools. Um, I was teaching last semester and a student of mine was like, hey, I, I watch a tutorial on how to manually do this, but uh, there's a new plugin uh, that automatically does it. So I was like, heck yeah. So he showed me and I went and did a couple of tests with this and it works fantastic. So the specific tool that you're going to want to use is this one right here. The one that says apply workflow to maps. All right. So I want to go ahead and hit apply workflow to maps. And then you get the apply workflow to image maps uh, window here. So we want to make sure, of course, we're going to be using V-Ray next. So go to workflow V-Ray next, and then now select multiple maps. Now, keep in mind that um, once I go to source images here, that you don't want to select all of these and import them. That's not going to work. You do have to still do this by batch. So I'm going to select first the main mat. So naming obviously is really important here. And I'm going to use export mat main metal. And, and then I'll come back and do this about four other times. But this will work for, for what I need. So I go ahead and select these. And you can see these are all the maps. I'm not using ambient occlusion again because I will be just using the GI uh, ambient occlusion here. All right. Or um, doing it as a separate uh, separate render pass. But once you have that, actually, before I hit apply, I want to show you what, what's going to happen here. I'm going to open up the hypershade and I'm going to bring our hypershade over here. And we're going to well, let me scale this down just a little bit. Give us some room and put this over here. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And there you go. It automatically creates this uh, node here, this material setup, uh, an entire graph system that automatically went ahead and linked it. There you go, right? Now, there's one thing actually I have to say before what we can, you know, kind of uh, pat our hands and say we're done here is you want to make sure you specifically go down to the normal uh, map here, okay? Uh, they still need to fix this. Um, maybe they'll patch this. Um, but right now, it imports, if you scroll down, to bump map and normal map, and you see map type bump map, that's not going to render properly. So you have to change this from bump map to normal map in tangent space, okay? Because if your normal map, basically the easy way to know is if it's purple, it's tangent space. If it's black and white, it's bump, all right? So setting that to normal map will give you everything that you need. And if I go ahead, right, and take a look now, look at this surface shader here. So if we select the V-Ray material, and then you go over here, look at that, displacement material. It's plugging in our display, our height map as a displacement node right here, okay? So if you want to use your height map, and if you don't want it, you can simply remove it, um, you have that ready to go, all right? So what I'm gonna do is actually just call this, you know, map main uh, metal, map main metal, and then call it substance. And I'm going to select the other material that I have, which is this. So I'll hold right click, select objects with material, and then I'll hold right click on my uh, main matte metal and assign material to selection. All right. Now I can go ahead actually and go into a uh, textured view so we can kind of see, make sure everything looks okay. And I'll turn off wireframe on shaded. And you can see, there we go. It's been applied. Now I have to manually apply it there, but it's these two objects um, that I have in here that have this material applied. All right, great. So I have this set up and let's just do, let's just do a quick render. I'm gonna be using progressive here with just basic irradiance map and light cache with some low settings here. So if you want to take a look at my settings, that's what I'm using there. And I'm just doing 540. All right. And I will go ahead and kick off a quick render. This go. And there we go. Look at that. I mean, that is pretty good. I mean, that's one for one what we had in Substance Painter, which is fantastic. And that all happened with just this simple plugin that's gonna link, I mean, how many maps do I have in here, right? It's gonna link all of these maps here and save a, 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 an immense amount of time, about 26 texture maps, okay? So 
Uh, I still have the other materials and, and texture maps to import, but before I do that, I want to make sure that everything looks good here. Okay. And we have displacement again. So let's say that you already have everything set up, but you're like, hey, hey, Anmar, I want to go ahead and only add my height map. How do I do that? No problem. You can go to the previous material. So I'm just going to use this as an example. And I can grab just a V-Ray material, and you can see here under the shading group, okay, you have displacement material. And if you want to plug in the, a height map, well, I just simply go to displacement map, displacement material. I go ahead and hit this box, and then it's going to be looking for displacement, right? We have to add a displacement node, all right? So what I typically do is go up to the top under Maya and I type in displacement and then I add a displacement node. So I add a displacement node here, then specifically for this uh, surface shader here, I can now uh, plug in the texture. And I can do that by simply using this displacement uh, checker box here. Because remember, if you take a look, I'll keep this here and I'll also select this material here and then I'll output so I'll shift click both of these and then output connections and again you can kind of see how this is set up you can see that this right here is using displacement now if you don't see displacement you have to select these two nodes and then the shader group here okay so then output connections and then you'll see it kind of hiding here and then it's right here under Let's see, where's the hide? There it is, displacement shader. And so we're just gonna plug it in to this node here. All right, so we have this, we have the displacement shader, and then we have displacement, and then you can just find this by using uh, just, you know, file and plugging it in as a normal file. Now, keep in mind, color space is important here, all right? So I'll make sure to do that main height, and that goes ahead and plugs in properly uh, here all right so we got this set up this set up and then output connections and there you go so just make sure to do output connections so you can see what's happening uh, with this but that's how you take if you wanted to manually do your own height map as displacement that's how you would plug it in Okay, so I hope that helped. I know that was a lot of questions that came up on the other videos. There's a lot of comments. I says, all right, I got you guys. I'll, I'll take care of you. So that's how you quickly do that. And if we go back to this map main that we had, I want to make sure just to cover that it also covers color space. So you can see that our normal is set to raw, our emissive is sRGB, as well as our base color is sRGB and metallic is set to raw and roughness is set to raw so it takes care of all of that the only manual step that we have to do is setting the normal map okay so i think that um that about covers it what i'll do is i'll do this one more time uh just to kind of recap here uh on the next set of textures all right so again i'll go to the substance shelf i'll grab the uh, output uh, or apply workflow to image maps. I'll go to V-Ray next, select multiple maps, and we'll start from the top. So I want the black base here, and we want all of these. I go ahead and select, and I hit apply, and there we go. So now it creates a new material here in, uh, in V-Ray, and it creates it as V-Ray material four. So I'll call this, you know, mat base substance. Okay, and I want to make sure to do matte black base, and I select that, hold right clicks, okay, hold right click, select, select objects with material, and then I will do matte base substance, apply material selection to selection, then I go over here, output connections, make sure everything looks good, and just to double check, we can see that it also linked our height map, and we can see that all of our color spaces are properly set, and we just need to make sure that our normal map is set to tangent space. Okay, so with that, I go ahead and do another render. So we can bring this over here. And there we go. All right. Now, the last thing that I want to show is how to, let's say you want to boost this emissive. That's also something that came up in my last video. And if we take a look at this, we can see that it's looking okay, and we can see that it's, um, you know, 
doing what it needs to do, but it's not really emitting that much light. And even if I go ahead, right, let me let this go for a little bit with progressive, clean that out. So I'll stop that. And even if I go to here, down at the bottom in the V-Ray frame buffer, and I open lens effects, and I turn on bloom and glare, all right? And then you can see that uh, basically turns out black. And let's see, we have effects result. It was trying to denoise, so I didn't let it finish denoising. But we have this right here at the RGB color, right? And it's still not giving us that uh, even if I boost intensity, it's not giving us that bloom and glare, all right? So what I want to do is I will go ahead and actually switch the sampler type to bucket. Then I want to go ahead and uh, do a quick render with this set to bucket. And we can kind of see what it's doing here. You can see the threshold's also pretty low, but it, uh, it'll render pretty fast at a low resolution. So I'll pause real quick. Okay, and I did lower the uh, settings here just so it renders a little bit faster. But uh, you can see even with the bloom and glare, and if I even increase intensity, I'm still not getting a lot of uh, bloom coming off of here. Well, what we need to do is go to our material here and go to the emissive. So if I find uh, emissive, which should be... Output connections, I think that was the other material. Emissive and sRGB. I go to color balance and I bump up the exposure. Now I tried one, two, but I really had, in order to get some uh, bloom coming off of that, really had to bump this up to about four exposure, okay? So that's gonna really push the brightness here. And let's just go ahead and do another render and let that go. And I'll just pause real quick and boom, look at that. You can already see the, actually I can probably just do this with the mouse here so it kind of focuses on this area and then I can uh, let this go. And you can see that the it's working uh, on this image, okay? And I make sure to leave it on RGB color. And uh, that's typically how I adjust it. Now this may be quite a bit with uh, set intensity to one. And I'll let this uh, finish here real quick. Okay, and there you go. And then now you can see that you have some control over here, so I can bring that up and increase the bloom and start to get some nice effects here. Now that is a bit intense, so you can play with those values, but I at least wanted to show you what you can do to have a little bit of control, um, you know, to have some uh, bloom and glare on, uh, on your images, all right? And how to really control that emissive value. So, all right, I think that that about does it. Um, let me just go ahead and pause real quick and connect all the uh, all the maps, and then we'll look at the last final render here. All right, and there we go. So here's the final render, and if I bring over the hypershade, you'll see that I have uh, all of these uh, substance materials set up. And if I go ahead and output those connections, you'll see one, two, three, four. Need about one more. Okay, and there we go, all five materials, all with about uh, the five or six maps uh, linked together. And that was all done in just a few minutes using the uh, apply workflow uh, tool here, which is incredibly, incredibly helpful. So I hope uh, this also saves you guys time down the road and you also found it equally helpful. So if you guys got any questions, comments, um, or any tips to add, uh, please let me know. Let, let the people know down in the comments below. And like, subscribe is always appreciated. So as always, stay safe and I'll see you guys around. Take care.